Six million dollar men in RoboCop with average men who experience a physical trauma in which the body parts are replaced with robotic parts. These fictional men have been turned into cyborgs, part man and part machine, in order to save the lives of those they love, which they don't on their own. Though these movies have never been viewed by the scientific community as anything but science fiction, a neurologist at the University of Kansas Medical Center and Case Western Reserve University have paired up to make these sci-fi stories into possibilities. We're calling in field agent Jack for the story. I'm here at the University of Kansas Medical Center, where neurologists have taken the next step on the path to cybernetic enhancements. They have done this with rats. As you can see, the rat has an interesting looking object which happens to be a cybernetic implant. The rat, prior to installation of the chip, was paralyzed in its leg. But by using a chip made of rubbery silicon, cracked gold, and platinum, the electrical impulses from the spine can communicate with the rest of the body. Thank you very much, Zach. That is fascinating. To add to the story, silicon rubber, which makes up the majority of the cybernetic implant, must be extremely flexible in order to mimic the elastic dura mater layer of the spine. Silicon is used instead of a carbon-based rubber due to silicon's property to bond to oxygen to form polysiloxane chains, being much more elastic than most carbon-based rubber. These properties are because of the larger bonding angles between silicon and oxygen about 130 degrees and next 1.63 angstroms. All right, we're getting a call from field agent Zach. Hi, Mike. I've just been informed about the gold aspect of the implants and how it will work. The E-dura is laced with cracked gold, which allows for electrical impulses to be picked up by the implant and sent to the nerve cells to try and regain use of them. Gold is also used because compared to other metals, it is very malleable, but compared to silicon, it is very inflexible. So that is why the gold is cracked. Gold specifically is used as the, as the conductor in this case because it has one valence electron, which makes it one of the best conductors available. When put together with other gold atoms, the valence electron, which is on the sixth orbital, is not very affected by the pull by the nucleus of the atom, and thus, the clump of gold will allow electrons to pass through it with ease. The chip also administers chemicals, which mimic the neuroreceptors of the nerve cells and also helps to activate the non-functioning nerve cells. The most likely chemical in this case is glycine, because it inhibits nerve function between the nerve junctions and is most commonly found in the spine. Chemically, glycine is NH2, CH2, COOH, which is an organic compound and used for many other things in the body. And now to wrap it up, it's Mike. Thank you, Zach. That was truly fascinating. I knew nothing about that. Well, that just leaves out the electrodes to talk about, which are made out of silicon and platinum. Platinum has specific qualities, which make it a key candidate for use for its conduction. Due to its ability to not tarnish, it does not oxidize, so it's a good reason to use platinum, but it's relatively expensive and it must be used in small quantities. All right, it appears if we've uh, concluded our daily tech talk with Mike and Zach. So, viewers.